Happy Sabbath to each and every one of you. It is such a good thing to be here again. Another Sabbath, another opportunity for a meeting, but another Sabbath. This means that God has been very, very gracious to each and every one of us, whether we are here on Zoom, Facebook, or even on YouTube. We are thankful that God has maintained our lives. We are going to go into a very important subject. It is going to spring off from Wednesday. And uh, I have come to realize that even in our studies that we are going into topics that people are actually calling for. And uh, if you have a burning desire to study into an issue, I would be glad for you to mention it to me. Even if you mention it here, that would be very good. We will research it and come and we will discuss it as uh, a body, as a family in Christ. So before we get going any further in our program this evening, I am going to invite you to pray with me. Even as we get into our program, I want to welcome all of those here with me on Zoom. And if you, wherever you are, want to discuss with us, if you want to share, come on to Zoom. You should be able to find that link on YouTube and also on Facebook. So pray with me, even as we begin, and then we're going to have an item of special music. Father in heaven, we thank you so very much for this opportunity that we can study your word. We thank you for the Sabbath, which is a day of rest and gladness. And we are going to study into this issue tonight. We are asking for your guidance, for your direction. We are asking for you to lead and bless us even in our study. We depend on upon your Holy Spirit. We are incapable of ourselves to understand these wonderful themes. We thank you for hearing our prayer in Jesus' name. Amen. Now there's a song here by Sister Mika. I did play it last, the last time we were here and it, it is one that is really resonating with me and when I find that there's a song that resonates with me, I always want to share it with others walking on the water. That is what our Master really did and he has shown us that we too can live a miraculous Christian experience as we walk on the water. So let us listen to Sister Kamika as she sings this song. Walking on the water. I hope that this is the one. No, that is not the one. I'm going to play Andrew first because I seem to be having a little difficulty with Kamika Zone. So let us go into Andrew's zone. I can't even walk. This is Brother Andrew and his son O'Neill.
would surely be me I thought I Praise God. Isn't that a wonderful song? Lord, I can't even walk without you holding my hand. So this evening we are studying the Sabbath for man's sake. For man's sake. The Sabbath for man's sake. And uh, as we go into this, I trust that we have uh, our pens and our paper and uh, our Bibles ready because uh, we are going to have a serious trick. I am going to be going and then I'm going to invite you and even if you have a statement or a question that you would like to ask you can also do so for man's sake for man's sake we're going to begin with 2nd Corinthians chapter 4 2nd Corinthians chapter 4 verse 15 2nd Corinthians chapter 4 verse 15 for all things are for your sakes 
that the abundant grace might through the thanksgiving of many redound to the glory of God. So Paul is saying here that everything is for our sake. Everything. Whether that thing is bad or good. Whether it is good or bad. If it is bad, it is working really for good. Everything is for our sake. Therefore, what God did is when he put together the creation, he put everything in creation with man in mind. Everything was for man's sake. And it was not only for man's sake, but it was for man's sake to redound to the glory of God. Therefore, the Sabbath, if the Sabbath is in fact something, it has been given for man's sake for the glory of God. Those are two things. The Sabbath has been given then for man's sake, if the Sabbath is something. Because all things are for man's sake. So if the Sabbath is something, it therefore means that it was instituted for man's sake, and not only for man's sake, but also for the glory of God. So whatever we have to go through, whatever we experience, whatever it is that God affords us to have or that he gives us, it is really for our sake, and uh, it is for our sake to redound to his glory. And therefore, if we are not keeping the Sabbath as God designs, two things are happening. We are not receiving that which has been given for our sake. Therefore, we are forfeiting a blessing. Secondly, we are depriving God of his glory. If we are not keeping the Sabbath as it ought to, because those are two things. All things were made for his sake. Now, when, as I said before, when God created man, he, cre he created this whole earth, this whole galaxy with man in mind. Let us see here in Jeremiah chapter 29, verse 11. Even in rebellion, God makes this statement. He says, For I know the thoughts that I think concerning you, save the Lord, Thoughts of peace and not of evil to give you an expended, expected rather end. To give you an expected end. To make certain that your end is one that is beneficial to you. So God is always thinking about us. God wants for us to know that whatever he does, it is with us in mind. Whatever he allows us to go through, it is for our sake, it is for our benefit. Therefore, whatever it is that he has given, it is for man because he has good thoughts concerning us. Now, when you look at the creation then, you would remember that God created everything and then he made man. In Genesis chapter 1 verse 26, we are told, And God said, Let us make man in our image, after our likeness and let them have dominion over the fish of the sea and over the fowl of the air and over the cattle and over all the earth and over every creeping thing that creepeth upon the earth you hear that so notice it is said this is given us some invaluable information let us make man in our image after our likeness this means that man was supposed to bear resemblance to his creator both in uh, external form and also in character and also in disposition. This means then that if a Sabbath, the Sabbath was given to man, it is then an exemplification of the fact that God is uh, also experiencing a Sabbath. Because man was made in God's image. Because we are supposed to have and to do everything that God does Therefore, if God then had given us a Sabbath, it means that he himself had been experiencing Sabbath. And Sabbath means rest. So because he has been experiencing rest, and I want for us to understand this, God was resting while working. God was resting while working. So the Sabbath day then is not necessarily the rest that we are talking about, it is a sign of the rest in God and that we can have in Him. 
but God did all of these things for man's sake. Now, since man was made in God's image, we know that God is three-dimensional in his structure. As he is Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, according to Matthew chapter 28, verse 18 through 20, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, three fundamental active dimensions of the Godhead. Man was made in the image of the Godhead. Man also is three-dimensional. Follow this very carefully. Man also is three-dimensional. Listen to what Paul says in 1 Thessalonians chapter 5, verse 23. And the very God of peace sanctify you, and uh, sanctify you wholly, that is completely, and I pray God your whole spirit and soul and body be preserved blameless unto the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ. So Paul is here saying that there are three dimensions to man. Spirit, soul, and body. Man was made in the image of his creator. As his creator is Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Man was made spirit, soul, and body. And what God did, even before he brought man on the scene, he put in place every single thing to meet man's needs beforehand. You see, God is never caught by surprise. And sometimes we oftentimes think that God is not aware of what we are going through. But the Bible tells us that even before we were created, God knew what we needed and he put in place those things that we would have needed. So, if man is spirit, soul and body god therefore had to put in place those things that would cater to man's spirit soul and body man is three-dimensional remember this man is three-dimensional and since man is three-dimensional and god was making a three-dimensional being he therefore had to put in place a system a structure he had to put in place those things to maintain all three dimensions of man. He had to maintain man physically. He had to maintain man psychologically and socially. He had to maintain man spiritually. So let us see what God did. Okay. Let us see what God did here. He looked after the physical need of man. Genesis chapter 1 verse 3 and God said let there be light and there was light that was the very first thing that God created God says let there be light and there was light is light necessary for us physically what do you think is light necessary for us physically yes yes Light was created before man came on the scene. When God created light, man was nowhere in sight. But he did it with man in mind. He did it to cater to man's physical needs. Without light, we would not be able to grow, we would not be able to function, we would not be able to survive. Light is necessary. Okay, what else did God do? In Genesis chapter 1 verse 6, and God said, let there be a firmament in the midst of the waters and let it divide the waters from the waters. A firmament. What was the next thing that God did for a man? He created a firmament. That firmament is the atmosphere. Therefore, before man came on the scene, God decided that he was going to cater to man's physical need by giving him, by putting in place air that he would be able to breathe. Because if there was no atmosphere, man would not be able to exist on this earth. What else did God do? Verse 9. And God said, Let the waters under the heavens be gathered together unto one place, and let the dry land appear. And it was so. Again, that was to cater to man's physical need. For if, in fact, there was no dry land, we are not amphibians and we are not water creatures. We would not be able to survive. We needed dry land to live on. God, therefore, looked after our physical need. What else it was that God 
had done for us. Genesis chapter 1 verse 11. And God said, Let the earth bring forth grass, the herb yielding seed, and the fruit tree yielding fruit after its kind, whose seed is in itself upon the earth. And it was so good. That is also for man's physical need. Our designer knew exactly what we would need to fuel our bodies, and therefore he gave us herb yielding seed, fruit yielding seed, and uh, trees provide food. Animals don't provide food. Animals were not made for food. Animals were made for something else to satisfy something that man needed, but not food. And that is why we are told in Genesis 1, 26 and 29, that God gave all of the herb of the field and all of these things for food for man. We were supposed to eat of the trees. The trees were made for food. Animals were not made for food. Those poor chickens. All right. So, this is very important to understand. God put all of these play things in place for man. Not only this, God thought about man emotionally and mentally, internally and socially. Notice what he did. Notice what he did here in Genesis chapter 1 verse 15. And, let, and this is the creation of the sun, the moon and the stars. Let them be for lights in the firmament of the heaven to give light upon the earth. And it was so. And they were given for times and for seasons. Now, those, those celestial bodies in the heavens, therefore, they were for times, they were for seasons, and they were like cycles. Man needed for his emotional stability, not one long period, but the concept of reoccurring time. That is for new beginnings. And sometimes, you know, after one day's past, you feel so crummy, you're glad that the day is over and you're looking forward for a new day. With each new day, you have an opportunity to have new beginnings. With, new, with, each new, with each new week, with each new month, with each new year, with each new decade, we all have an opportunity for renewal of cycles. With each new generation, with, with each new cycle, all of these things, these are cycles that man needed emotionally. God understood this. And God put it in place for man. But now, I'm going to ask you a question. Let us look at Genesis 1 verse 20. And God said, Let the waters bring forth abundantly the moving creatures that hath life, and fowl that they may fly above the earth in the open firmament of heaven why did god create the birds and the fishes what do you what do you think do you think that they were supposed to supplement our diet what do you think the birds and the fishes were created for they were were they for man's sake now we went through all of those things that were for man's sake physically but birds and fishes are they also for man's sake I, I, yes. yes. No. Okay, good, good, Roshanna. I, I, I was not seeing you. Okay, yes. So birds and fishes, they were made for man's sake. What need were birds and fishes supposed to fulfill a man? Entertainment. It's good to look at them. Okay, so Roshanna said entertainment. You can have recreation. All right, recreation. That is uh, that you can go and enjoy them. You can go in nature. You can. I like to go in my backyard and see not only the doves but the pigeons and uh, the yellow breasts, the sparrows. We can see all types of birds. They are flying around and uh, you enjoy them. You don't have to have these creatures caged up to enjoy them. That is selfish. They will come all around you and enjoy you. The sparrows come into our homes every day and uh, they are looking for food. They are not afraid of us. The thing is uh, they enjoy our presence and uh, it seems as though they come into the house and say, listen, you have some work to do. Go outside and put some food out there for us. So we have to go and break up some biscuit, put it out there and then the sparrows will go and they will eat. They enjoy the freedom and they enjoy our company. We enjoy the recreation of uh, those birds. 
So birds were made for recreation. They were not made for meals. Okay. And uh, we have something else also. Let us look at verse 24. And God said, Let the earth bring forth the living creature after his kind, cattle and creeping things, and beasts of the earth after his kind, and it was so. Why did God make the animals? Of course, we kill them, we eat them. But why did God make the animals? What need were they supposed to fulfill within man? Because he placed all of these things in there even before animal even before man was brought on the scene so what were the purpose of animals to humanity they were made for our sake for companionship. Companionship. very good very good so now this is very important we can say companionship we enjoy their company and they enjoy ours but man also has a need for significance and also for rulership. God made us this way. And God did not make us to rule over other human beings. That is where you find that men like to rule over their wives and sometimes wives like to rule over their husbands. But, but the reality is human beings were never designed to rule over other human beings. We have be, been given the lower order of animals that we they will look up to us and enjoy our rulership. We are supposed to take care of them, look after them, and rule over them. Significance, that is a mental dimension. God was dealing with us psychologically, internally. All right? Now, but then we go to verse 18 of chapter 2. Verse 18 of chapter 2. And the Lord said, it is not good for the man, it is not good that the man should be alone. I will make him and help me for him. That is where companionship comes in. God knew that we needed a social, there's a social dimension to us. We needed the animals. Yes, they fulfill it in a certain way, but we also need other human beings. We need each other. We need one another. You cannot say you don't need me. I cannot say I don't need you. God made it that we need each other to be a blessing one to another. So not only was it that he made the animals and the birds and the fishes and the sun and the moon and the stars and light and water and all of these things for man's sake. He made us to have companionship with other human beings and that is also for our sake so it is for our sake that we would have a human being in our lives it is for our sake that we would have some person there that we can share with share our lives with and uh, automatically i know that we would think about marriage but it does not have to be marriage it could be another friend a good friend out there we need each other we need to be able to serve one another, God designed that it should be so. So God looked after our physical needs, psychological and social needs. So he did everything that man needed. All right. No question. It says in Genesis chapter 1, verse 31. Genesis chapter 1, verse 31. And God saw that everything that he had made and God saw everything that he had made, and behold, it was very good. And the evening and the morning were the sixth day. So God did all of these things in six days. Even created man for man's sake in six days. He did all of that in six days. God did not create in seven days. God created in six days. And he put everything in place for man. This is telling us something about God. This is telling us something that even in our Christian experience, we don't have to try to work for anything. God has already worked and done everything. We have to enter into his work. Rishana, you're saying something? Okay. So if you, are, if you want to say something, please 
I'm uh, indicate by the raise of hands. I, I'm not seeing you, so you may have to do it electronically so they can see it. All right. So this, and this is very important. God did everything for man, for the sake of man, for the sake of human beings. And uh, notice, he looked after our physical needs. He looked after our social and psychological needs. Because we are, we are physical, we are social. And therefore, he did everything for us in those six days. Was that complete for man? What do you think? Was that complete? Or did God have to do something more at this time to fulfill some need in man? What do you think? Car carry on. It says in Genesis 1, 31. Notice what it says. Genesis 1, 31. And God saw everything that he had made. And behold, it was very good. And the evening and the morning were the sixth day. So he saw it and it was very good. Was that all that man needed? No. What else did he need? Rest in Christ. So when, when man was created, was he not resting in Christ? I think I see... Galaxy J5, that's Glenroy? Yes, it is. Oh, okay, all right. Yes, go ahead, sir. Yeah. Um, the physical needs were supplied. Now the spiritual needs need to be supplied as well. So he's provided for his spiritual needs as well. Okay. So notice that the physical need was provided for. All right. His physical need, okay. Good. All right. His physical needs were provided for, and uh, his social needs were provided for, but Glenroy said that there was something, his spiritual need had to be provided for. I see, Andrew, your hand is raised. Let um, me spotlight you. Yes, go ahead. At that time, it was only Adam 1. He wasn't created yet, so I believe that is when he created the help meet for him. Also, Eve. All right, okay. All right, so... Eve was created on the sixth day. After he created Eve, after he created the animals, Eve fulfilled a social need. The animals created and um, they fulfilled social needs. The birds and the fishes fulfilled social needs. The food, the air, the light, and the seasons, they fulfilled psychological and physical needs. But there was still a need in man to be fulfilled. And Glenroy said it correctly. He still had to put in place something to fulfill man's spiritual need. <coughs> so the question is, what was that thing that God then put in place to fulfill man's spiritual need? He looked after, notice, before man came on the scene, he did everything to fulfill his physical need. He did everything to fulfill his social need. But it was after man was on his scene that God put in place something to fulfill his spiritual need. There is a reason for this. I want some person to tell me what it is that God did. And we're going to look at it, but I am going to give you time to talk with me. What is it that God did to fulfill man's spiritual need and why it was not implemented prior to man's creation. Any person? Andrew? Well, after he created Adam and Eve, then he created the Sabbath. And, um, well, <laughs> my reason for creating Sabbath after, because I, I believe that he wanted Adam and Eve to look to him 
for spiritual guidance, go to, go to him, come to him. So that very Sabbath come in and he, he blessed the Sabbath. I, let me tell you how I, how I can explain this. I up all the days, he said, every one of them was very, very good. And then he said, look, when he created the Sabbath day, it was the only one that he blessed. And by blessing it, he make it so holy that man will look to that day more, even though all ideas are equal, but that day is a day that they could come before God for worship. All right. Okay. Pretty good. Charmaine. I, um, I, I was going to say pretty well, when Adam was in the garden, before Eve came along, he used to commune with God. So he walked with God, God walked with him. They taught, they communicated, and they had a relationship. And so they were basically like companions after Eve came. He, he built in them the need to worship him, to commune with him, their spiritual side. So they felt fulfilled when they worshiped God because since Adam knew him, he knew he had to worship him. He was his creator. And God also built boundaries. And well, I guess he built the boundaries after Eve came along for women. But anyway, he, he built in us a, a, a like how we have our conscience, this invisible, they have this invisible need to worship God, to say thank you, to whatever. Okay, pretty good. Thank you very much. Now, think about it. Roshanna. Yes. Um, I think of it this way. You know, like how your parents would call a babysitter because they're going out for date night on like a Friday night or something? What if, because he was, because God made them to have a relationship with him, right? A friendly relationship. So what if Saturday or not Saturday, Sabbath is sort of like the a day, day to spend time with your friends and commune with each other and build your relationship and, you know, like that. Is that a day like, like date night? All right. Thank you very much for your thought also. I, I saw Glenroy sign up earlier. I don't know if you wanted to respond to that. Yeah, yeah actually, I, I had it too, but then I took it down. Um, to, the, the, to me, the answer to your question lies in the fact that man, not only a man's um, need to, be, to worship God, but to reflect upon the things that God had provided for him. All things were for man's sake, and therefore, to take that time out and to look back to see the Creator has given me a companion, and by the way, that companion was created the same day as Adam did, just a little later. The animals, how pleasant the atmosphere was, how beautiful the trees and the sea or whatever was. And that day, Adam looked forward to so that he can really reflect upon how much God loves me and return. He loved God for what God had done for him. So that took care of his spiritual needs, his physical needs, his social needs, because he had a beautiful lady next to him as well. And all of these things lended to him looking to the creator as the only source of his happiness. Pretty good. Very good. I will say one last thing. Yes, go, go. There is something in us because if you look at National Geographic um, documentaries and so on, and if you look at people years ago, how they spoke about how people 
that never heard of Jesus Christ, but yet in them, they still raise their hands and they worship something that need to worship that need to worship the aborigines who are way out there eons ago they would raise their hands and worship even whether it's the sun or whatever they're worshiping but there's that need in in us to worship and to give thanks and it's something in us correct so we have uh, that dimension of man a need a yearning to worship and uh, it is important that Glenroy mentioned that the Sabbath was given to fulfill that need in man for worship. Because all things were made by God to fulfill the needs of man. He put in place those things physically to fulfill man's physical needs, to fulfill man's social and psychological needs, and also to fulfill man's spiritual needs right there in Genesis and uh, that is why and notice it was in, it was critically important that this element like what glenn Roy had mentioned earlier was put in place after man came on the scene because uh, one he needed to reflect on the work that god had done for him and uh, rest with god in that work celebrating the work that god had done and secondly it takes a choice of man to worship man must choose to worship so God is not going to force man to worship though it is a need it is a need for man to worship God but God will not force man to worship him so he gave man the Sabbath after man came on the scene and this is what we are told in Genesis chapter 2, verse 1. After he had made all of those things, he said, Thus the heavens and the earth were finished, and all the hosts of them. So notice that God, he had finished the heavens. He had finished the earth. He had finished, put in place all of those things to fulfill man's physical and psychological needs. And then in verse 2 it says, And on the seventh day, God ended his work which he had made. Now notice that the work was finished really on the sixth day. He did all of the work on the sixth day. But then he, it says, on the seventh day he ended. Why did he say that? When the work was already finished on the sixth day. It may, may therefore that he has incorporated the seventh day for a reason. And it is really for man's sake. He says, And on the seventh day, God ended his work which he had made, and he rested on the seventh day from all his work which he had made. Notice this. Who rested? God rested. Now, was God tired? So this rest here has absolutely no. nothing to do with fatigue. This rest here is uh, a revelation of the perfection of a work that was accomplished by divinity. Therefore, on the Sabbath, that is where you find those who are resting on the Sabbath, they work more than those who are not resting on the Sabbath. Because it is God that is working through them. For God created the sun, the moon, the stars. He created everything. And on the seventh day, he had to be maintaining those things that he had created. He, it was still taking power and energy for him to maintain creation. The same power that created is the power that maintained. And God had to have been maintaining creation on the seventh day. Therefore, the Sabbath then... The seventh day Sabbath is uh, a symbol to us of uh, the power of God to create. It's a symbol to us of the power of God to create. And this brings rest. When we forget God's power to create, when we forget God's omnipotence to sustain, when we forget 
God's almighty power that can keep us from falling. It is then that we are out of rest and we cannot keep Sabbath. So a lot of people are going to church on Saturday, but they are not Sabbath keepers because they have forgotten that God is able to sustain them. God is able to keep them from falling. That is what Sabbath really is. Can you repeat that point, sir? So again, Sabbath then is not just going to church on Saturday. Sabbath is to recognize that God has the power to create all things. God has the power to sustain all things. God is omnipotent. Therefore, he's capable of lifting you up and holding you up. When you forget that God has the power to do that, you cannot keep the Sabbath even if you go to church on the seventh day. You're just going to church on Sunday uh, a day early. Good. So, in, re before you go, in relation to your, to your um, question concerning God resting, um, he did not rest as one who was tired, but he rested as one who was satisfied with what he had accomplished. Very good. He was full of satisfaction. Very good. Potent thought. So God was satisfied with his work. But I want for us, I am going to ask you a question. It says, he rested. This is the seventh day. Was man already created? There's an obvious question. Yes, yes man was created and man, man entered, entered into God. God's rest because it is indeed God's rest and not man's rest. Very good. Man was created. Man was only seen. Therefore, when God ended his work and rested, man rested with the Creator. Man entered into the Creator's rest. The seventh day, therefore, is not man's rest. You know, people will say, well, Saturday is your rest day and Sunday is my rest day. Well, the reality is, my time for rest is every night. That is my time for rest every night. But the creator, but the seventh day is the creator's rest day. The seventh day is the creator's rest day. And therefore, when we rest on the seventh day, we have entered into his rest and that fulfill our spiritual need. The only way our spiritual need can be truly fulfilled is when we enter into the creator's rest. And when we don't enter into the Creator's rest, then we feel a sense of dissatisfaction. Have you ever eaten and feel full and yet empty? Have that, has that ever happened to you? You feel full and yet empty. That has happened to me just, just recently. So, so you can eat and feel full and still you're empty. You can go and work and you can, you, you know, uh, a gentleman said this one time, this is a great motivational speaker, he said that success without fulfillment is total failure. Success without fulfillment is total failure. You remember, what is his name? Robin Williams, very successful man and he hung himself. Success without fulfillment is failure, total failure. God was completely fulfilled with the work that he was able to accomplish, that is what success really is. And when we enter into God's rest, that is when we are successful in our Christian experience. Not how much we can do, but how well we can enter with God into his rest, it determines our success in our Christian experience. Okay. We go a little further. It says, and verse 3, and God, notice verse 3 now, and God blessed the seventh day and sanctified it because that in it he had rested from all his work which God created and made. When it says then that God blessed the seventh day and sanctified it, give me some thoughts. What does he mean? When he says that he rested, what does he mean? Give me some thoughts. He 
bless the seventh day he sanctified it what does he mean when what about, does the scripture mean when it says he blessed the seventh day and he sanctified it what does the scripture mean i, I, don't, I don't really want, want to talk, talk too much, much but I, I don't be afraid of talking too much um g Delil. continue right but um then he blessed the seventh day and sanctified it he set it apart for holy use and therefore when we find that rest in god we find holy use for that day and in that we too are sanctified because the blessings are placed in the day of itself so if the blessings place in the day the sanctification place in the day when we enter into god rest we are blessed and we are sanctified that is we are made holier and still holier all right thank, thank you very much gd Lyle. think about it very carefully and that will that is very very true so he blessed the seventh day how only can god bless something how only can god bless something does he pronounce verbally a blessing what does god do to bless something by his presence being there make it a blessing very good so god's presence god's presence in a, a thing is a blessing to that thing god does not bless something outside of his presence so if god bless the seventh day it means that the presence of god is with you in a powerful way as you rest with god on the sabbath day now you cannot enjoy the blessings of companionship with a spouse unless you have a spouse and you're with them personally that you that that spouse has blessed or that person has blessed you with their presence you go into a person's home you know we are told that when missionaries come to your home and you open up the doors god says when you go in say peace be unto this house because a blessing has entered into the home so the presence of god attends the missionary as he enters the home so when we are when we cease from our labors and we enter into that relationship with God and in a very dynamic way it is then that we experience the blessing that he placed in that day so the day it is like a married ring the day the ring itself is nothing is a symbol of an experience you have with the spouse so the seventh day itself is nothing but that you have the one that signifies that is, signifies that is God Himself that you are married to Him, joined to Him. The Sabbath, powerful. But it says He sanctified it. He sanctified it, and as Larry had mentioned, He set it apart for holy use. That is, it was set apart from all of the other days. Notice that God did something every single day. On Monday, on I said Monday. On the first day. He did something on the second day. He did something on the third, fourth, fifth, and sixth day. He did something. But on the seventh day, we are told he, he did something that was completely out of sync with all of the other days. He rested. And therefore, that day stands apart, distinct, and separate from every other day. Because he did not create anything new. What he did was to cement his relationship with man on that day. God cemented his relationship with man. Man was now brought onto the scene only a few hours before. And God used the seventh day to cement his relationship with man. So that man and God can enjoy on a cognitive level a deep, sweet, intimate relationship. Even before man started to work. So the very first thing that man was able to do after he was created, and of course, he would have named the animals and he would have received a wife, he rested with God and then he was put to work. So where God is concerned, 
where the creation of man is concerned, he must rest first. Before we can work, we must rest. The seventh day, we rest in, and then we start the work the first day of the week. Okay. Any questions on that? Any questions? We are good so far? We are good so far. It's now 5 to 8. We are doing good for time. So, remembering the, the Sabbath day is really having or being in a relationship with God depending upon Him so that you are not having a making a conscious effort about remembering the day itself on the day you would have had your 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 relationship with god during the week and because you are resting in god only then you can really enjoy the seventh day very good thank you so very much to support it and that is why when we have a relationship with god during the course of the week it is celebrated the seventh day, cemented the seventh day. Now, so the Sabbath. Before, before we go, yes, before go ahead. Go, Brandon, uh, I just thought that um, you have to be a little careful there in saying that we have to rest first and then work. Rather, we should work and then rest because God worked and then he rested. So to say that we should rest and then work. I'm not quite sure that that's correct. So think about it very carefully. Think about it very carefully. You see, the plan of salvation was also etched within the Genesis story. Therefore, God had to do all of the work for man and then brought man on the scene so that man would enter into God's work. So a man does not have to work for salvation. The very first thing that man does is to enter into Christ and then works will follow. So that is oh, the I, I thought yeah. I thought you were you, you were dealing I thought you were dealing in terms of um in terms of days. So if that is what you mean, then surely I, I, I would agree with that. Entering into God's rest and then God puts the man to work. Sure. Wonderful. And therefore we we are now looking at man's spiritual need. So man's spiritual need. The very first thing that he needs to do is to recognize God's ownership, recognize what God has done for him. And then, remember he came on the scene on the sixth day, coming on to the end too. He came on the scene the sixth day. And therefore, what God then did was to give him rest, to say, look and see what I have done for you, so that when you now launch out, into your work you would remember it is not you but it is the work that i have i'm doing through you the genesis is a gospel message in pictorial form god is so amazing that even before sin occurred he etched within the whole genesis situation the message of the gospel for example one of those things that we need to remember is that in order for Adam to get a wife, he had to go into a deep sleep. And uh, therefore, he gave up his dominion temporarily to get his wife. That was to teach us that for the second Adam to get a wife, he too had to go into a deep sleep. So all of these principles are there. Remember what Jesus says in, is it John 12, 24? Except a corner of wheat fall into the ground and die. It abided for alone. So... That was speaking then in a pictorial form, using that as an allegory to the death of Jesus Christ. So we are seeing then that the way God set up the creation, that all of the work is God's work. A man enters into God's work because the, what Paul says, the works were finished from the foundation of the earth. So if we don't have any work to do. What we need to do is enter into God's rest and enjoy his works. So we rest before we work. Okay. Yes. Uh, yeah. Um, the chat. The chat. Um. Here's um. Yeah. Start the chat. Okay. You told me to check the chat. 
Oh, okay. All right. Okay. All right. No problem. Let me go a little further. Hello? Yes. Yeah. yeah um. I was thinking concerning the concept of birthdays. Yeah, I'm, I'll turn this on. Okay, um, the, the thing about birthdays is that it is the whole concept of, of creation and the Sabbath is similar to birthdays in that when a mother gives birth, she does all the work. And then afterwards, the baby comes far forth. And then the mother celebrates the work that she has done with the, with the father's help on that day every year. But the truth of the matter is this, that unless the mother has, the, the child has a relationship with the mother, when the child's birthday come around, then the child will not be able to enjoy the birthday that she was given. But he said, well, she won't be able to celebrate it in, in the same fashion. It will just be another day to her. But when there's a relationship, when the day comes, then they all come together and they rest a while and enjoy their, each other's company. And then it becomes special because, not because of any activity that's being done, but just being there with each other and doing things together. That's it. Thank you very much. And uh, I like that thought. So we are seeing, and this is what our focus will be continually, is relationship that we're looking at. And uh, unless you have a relationship with God, it is impossible for you to keep the Sabbath holy. Because the Sabbath is about relationship. The Sabbath is about having intimacy with God. And that is why he first gave man the opportunity to enter into him, into rest, enjoy him. It's about enjoying God enjoying your God, wherever you are. You can be under a breadfruit tree, a mango tree, wherever you are on the Sabbath, enjoy a relationship with God. Let your mind be at peace. Let your mind be at rest. Let God, you know, like a wave, roll over your soul and feel the endorphins and the oxytocin flowing through your body as you experience the coziness of being one with God. That is what God wants to have with you. Not just going to church and say, well, they are at church on the seventh day and they keep it the seventh day holy. Oh yes, the majority of people who go to church on the seventh day do not keep it holy. Why? Because they don't have an experience, an, an, an experimental relationship with their maker. So I am not going to go any further with you. I have uh, much further to go, but this is just... A big, just a beginning and uh, probably next Friday we will continue it and Friday is probably a good day for us to do it on anyhow so I trust that you have received something so far as we go on we are going to go on to see what you do on the Sabbath Sabbath day how to keep it holy and uh, which day God said is the Sabbath day that we can know which day today is the seventh day. We don't have to be in any doubt at all as to what the seventh day is. God himself who instituted it, he has to be able to maintain it for us to know which day we can rest with him from our labors. So thank you so very much. And are there any questions? I see G. D. Lel again. They, go ahead, sir. Yeah, I actually, I was saying relation to the you said um, in as we be so sad, we be good to show as well when it starts and it ends. But that is something that the constitution is you really want to, want to be Sabbath keepers, not Sabbath keepers. You want to be Sabbath keepers. We want to be Sabbath keepers when it ends. Okay, thank you so very much. We want to be Sabbath keepers and not just Saturday keepers. And we are not Saturday keepers. A lot of people are Saturday keepers. And following even the system and the calendar of the world, we want to have the word of God to speak to our hearts in such a way that we would follow God and him alone. So thank you so very much. We are going to have an item of special music. Let me see if I can get that. I was playing around with my program today, and I believe 
I did something that was not right. But I think that I'm going to get this song for you. Let us walk on the, Christ walk on the water. Peter walk on the water. Let us see if we are going to be able to walk on the water this evening with Sister Kamika. <laughs> again and that's what God will do he will do it over and over again what a God love that song love that song it really resonates with my heart let us pray father in heaven we are truly thankful that you have given to us the Sabbath a day of rest and gladness a day that we can cement our relationship with you a day that we can spend in quietness and worship and praise and thanksgiving. A day where there will not be hustle and bustle, but that we would have our minds focused only on enjoying you, enjoying oneness with you, our Savior. Grant, dear Lord, that we would not walk away from you and trample upon your Sabbath or trample upon you in terms of a relationship. Bless us. Forgive us, strengthen us, be with us, 
Heal us, O oh Lord. We thank you for hearing our prayer in Jesus' wonderful name. Amen. Praise God. So I thank you all so very much for being with me this evening. I trust that you will, wherever you are, whether you are on Facebook, YouTube, or here on Zoom, that you have a wonderful Sabbath in the Lord. Have a good night.